Hello everyone, I'm Geek Freak here and welcome to the video. Now before I go on, there's a few things I'd like to mention. In the first 7 or 8 minutes, I'll be rambling about how a story should be and how a story should end, what my favourite stories are, and explaining why there needs to be a part 2, you know, etc, etc. So if you guys want to cut straight to the list, I'll leave on the screen a number of the part of the video where you need to go to to see the list. As you can see on the screen right here. But if you guys want to watch the whole thing, please continue watching the video. And with that said, let me continue. Don't you just love animated stories on YouTube? To scary animated stories? To drama stories? You know, something along the lines of 1C Entertainment, Llama Arts, Nightmare Tales. I love horror animated stories. But I'm not here to talk about those. I might make a video of my top favourite horror animated stories. In the future, maybe. I'm talking about drama animated stories. You know, the non-scary ones. I used to like Story Booth until it went political. I also liked Actually Happened till they took all their videos down. Which is sad because I would have loved to have watched those videos again. There's also My Story Animated. There are loads of animated stories on YouTube and they are very enjoyable to watch. But sometimes, you know when you watch one of those animated stories on YouTube, at the end of the video, it leaves you off on a cliffhanger and you want to know more on what happened next. And sometimes at the end of the video, the person narrating the video will say something along the lines of, my husband is cheating on me with my best friend and one of my children isn't mine. If I reveal to my husband that I know, my family will be ruined. What should I do? And the thing is, after that, you want to know what's going to happen next. I mean, sure, sometimes stories like that are meant to have cliffhangers. I mean, it depends, really. Some people will say, oh, oh, what happened next? What happened next? And some people will say, wow, that's a very good cryptic cliffhanger there. And you know what? Some stories aren't meant to have an ending. Scary stories, just like the one I just said, are meant to be ambiguous. And sometimes, in non-scary stories, it's up to the audience to tell the person who's narrating the story what to do. Like, for example, somebody could be narrating a story, and this person who's telling the story could be telling the story about, about our sister isn't her blood sister or biologic sister and that she's been dating their uncle and then she'll ask the audience something along the lines of this is all my fault what should I do and then we the audience would write something down in the comment sections below saying something along the lines of oh tell your parents and so on and so on I mean I guess those are okay but I would still love a part two on what happened next now sometimes the people who are animating these stories would sometimes take stories from reddit or some other forum they would read them word for word and animate alongside the story and sometimes not all the time but sometimes we would never get an answer to questions that was in the story like for example on Stephen D's channel there's a story about a man and a baby and the baby is his and then a woman comes up to the baby picks her up and tries to walk away with her the father grabs the woman and then the woman says help me help me this man's trying to take away my baby and then the father gets hit and then a few things happen and then the mother of the child comes out of the shop and sees what's happening to her husband. She goes over to see what the hell's going on and one thing led to another and she finds out that her child is being kidnapped by a woman. She runs over to the woman, tries to take her baby back. The kidnapper lets go of the baby and the kidnapper runs to her car and drives away and nobody did anything to stop her. And then the police came and they were saying, oh, that man tried to steal the baby. And the cop was saying, oh, was the father being mean to the baby? And one thing led to another and the couple and the baby went home. But the thing is, we are never given an answer on what happened to the kidnapper. And this isn't the animator's fault. He's just reading what the person wrote. So the animator doesn't have an answer. It's the person who wrote this story on Reddit who has the answer. And you know what? That's fine. If the animator doesn't have an answer and he's just taking a story that already exists, then you know what? I'm not blaming the animator or anybody for that matter. So yeah, those are the three things that I can accept when it comes to storytelling. Leaving it ambiguous, the audience giving the narrator advice, and it's up to us to fill in the holes, and that we're not given an answer because not even the animator knows the answers to those questions. I can accept those because he's not the one that's telling the story because he got that story from somebody else. And the person who wrote the story is the one with the answers. So yeah, and there are stories that have like part one, two, three, four, you know, that has a continuous story. And I've seen those on YouTube. Those are great. And sometimes, if not most of the time, just having one video to tell the whole story and doesn't need a part two to give us a satisfying ending. I mean, sure, we might have a few questions like, did this guy ever meet his half siblings? You know, something like that. But questions like that isn't the focus of the story. The focus of the story is about something else. Like, this guy finally met his father and finds out that his mother had an affair 
with his father while he was married to another woman. You know, stuff like that. The main focus would be about that. And some people might say, oh, but what about the half-siblings? But you know what? That's not the big picture. It's about how he handles the fact that his mother had an affair with an already married man. So asking questions like, oh, did he ever meet his half-siblings? doesn't need to be answered. I mean, yeah, sure, you're going to have some people out there who's going to say, oh, uh, so did he actually give for me to his half-siblings? I mean, yeah, sure, there's going to be people out there who wants to know the answer. But again, that's not the big picture. Not every single question needs to be answered. And you know what? I'm okay with that, regardless if this story is made up or it's a true story. The main point is that we need to focus on the big picture of the story, not the potential side stories. But if they was to continue the story by telling us the side stories, then that's fine too. However, during my time of watching animated stories on YouTube, there has been stories that I've watched that I wished had a part two, or that I'm waiting for part two to come out. And one of those stories that I'm waiting for from My Story Animated is from My Story Animated, my mom woke up from a coma after 15 years to get revenge. And let me tell you guys something, I love this story. I loved it so much that I made analysis video in parts one and two. Well, you know, from the same video. The story itself is fantastic. But the problem is, the story stops at a cliffhanger. And it's been three months since that video has came out. That story, My Mom Woke Up From A Coma, is a very, very good story. And loads and loads of people want to see part two. And I hope they can bring out part two very, very soon. And it isn't just this story. There's a YouTube channel called Short Stories. And sometimes they would have a single video telling the whole story. And sometimes they'll have parts one and two of a story in two separate videos. And sometimes they will leave the story on a cliffhanger or leave it ambiguous or leave it up to the audience to say what the narrator should do. Now, sometimes I don't mind the story being ambiguous or that we have to give the narrator some advice. And hell, I don't even mind if the story is on a cliffhanger. It depends on the story, really. But on short stories, there are stories on that channel that I wish was completed with a part two or part three if they're going to go that far. And that is the main reason why I made this video. I am going to show you guys which videos deserves a part two to carry on the story. Because I will say this, there are stories on short stories that really needs to carry on with its story or stories. And this is where the top list starts. This is gonna be my top eight short story videos that deserves a part two to finish the story. Now, some people will disagree and say, oh, this story isn't interesting enough for a part two. And some people will say, oh, but Geek Freak, you've missed this story. This story deserves more attention than these other stories. Well, I'm going to tell you guys something. It's either one of a few things as to why I didn't put those videos on this list. Number one, I didn't find them interesting enough for me to want a part two. Or number two, it's most likely I haven't seen them or I completely forgot about them. So if there's any stories on short stories that you wish that was on this list, please put them in the comment section below and say why that these stories should get a part two. And I might make a part two of a top 10 list of stories that deserves a part two to carry on the story. So if there's a story in short stories that you think deserves a part two that I didn't put on this list, please don't be butthurt. It would probably be most likely that I forgot about those stories. So again, if there's a story on short stories that deserves to be on a list, put them in the comment section below. And do take note, I'm going to be spoiling on what happens in all these stories so if you guys haven't seen these videos stop watching this video now and go and watch those videos because again major spoilers coming up and so with that said let's move on to the list number 10 my bff jumped in our couple picture then cut me out of it but i never know her real purpose shouldn't it be knew her purpose whatever yeah, very long title there, isn't it? <laughs> like I said, I'm going to be giving you guys spoilers. So if you guys don't want to hear any spoilers, stop this video and go and watch the title of this video that I'm about to spoil for you guys. I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one, and let's go. In this video, there are two girls, and one of the girls was in love with a boy. And the girl and the boy started going out. And the other girl kept on coming between them, trying every way possible to come between them. And then the girl who was going out with the guy, she finds the girl cutting a picture of herself, the boy, and the other girl. And the girl who's going out with the guy, she thinks that the girl is trying to take her boyfriend away from her. And the girl with the boyfriend start yelling at the girl who is cutting out the, the picture because she thinks that the girl is trying to take away her boyfriend. And then the girl who's cutting out the picture said sorry and she dropped out of college. I also forgot to mention that the two girls are best friends. So again, the girl who was coming between the boyfriend and her friend, she left and then a few years later, the girl with the boyfriend meets another guy and this guy listens to her and they start talking and they have so much in common with each other and then the girl dumps her boyfriend 
and goes out with this other guy, and then later the ex confronts her new boyfriend, and the ex starts fighting his ex's new boyfriend, and then her boyfriend's wallet fell out, and it had a picture of her and her best friend, and then the fight between the two boys stopped, and she told her ex what was in the wallet, and then her new boyfriend broke down and told them the truth, that he was actually her friend who dropped out of college, and she had a sex change, and the reason why she did that is because she was in love with the girl. She was in love with her friend. She had a sex change so she could be with the girl. So now she is a he. And at the end of the video, the girl said, I've never actually been with a trans before, which is dumb because having a sex change doesn't mean you are trans. But yeah, I'm getting off topic. And now the girl doesn't know what to do. Should she stay with her new boyfriend that used to be a girl? Or should she go back to her old boyfriend? And that's where it ends. Now, the reason why I think that this deserves a part two is not only is it drama, but this is a very unique situation. Well, I mean, it is kind of unique. You have a girl who turned herself into a man, so that she, that's now a he, can be with the girl. But the thing is, the girl who is now a man, he comes off creepy to me. At the very least, he should have told her when he was a girl, on how she or he felt. To me, I think the girl now guy was being a bit too creepy. For me, I think she should go back to her old boyfriend. But the fact that this girl now guy went out of his way to have a sex change in order to be with the girl that he, she likes. For me, I would like to know what happens next. It must have cost her him a lot of money to do the sex change. And here's the thing, what does she, he's parents, brothers, friends, family, etc, etc, think of this. That she, he had a sex change in order to be with a girl that she, he likes. What does the girl think about this? What does the ex think about this? But if you ask me, I think the girl now guy was being a little bit too stalking if you ask me. For some reason, this doesn't feel right to me. The girl now guy kept on coming between them and when she got caught out and left and then sometime later, she had a sex change and turned into a boy. If you ask me, I think she went way too far just to be with a girl. For me, I think the girl should just go back to her ex. But you know, that's just my opinion. And that is why I believe that this story should have a part two to it. And that's that. And so with that said, let's move on to number nine. Number nine. I lured my neighbor into my plan to have a baby. This story annoyed me because of the main character. Because in this story, one of the main character's friends got pregnant and she'll become a mother soon. And the main character of this video said that she desperately wants to have a baby, that she wants to have a daughter, and she so desperately wants to be pregnant and all that stuff. And she even got one of her classmates to have sex with her. He pulls out a condom and she goes, oh no, you don't have to put one on. And the guy was like, huh? And the guy was like, oh no, I'm gonna put this on. And then the girl explains that she wants a baby and she won't trap him. And then, the guy says she's crazy and leaves and then the old school knew about it and the parents of the guy that she was trying to sleep with told his parents and then his parents told her parents what she was trying to do and then after that they kept an eye on her making sure she keeps out of trouble and then they leave to a funeral and their next door neighbor keeps an eye on her and her next door neighbor has a kid and he's a single father and somewhere down the line she tries to seduce him at first he doesn't want to and they're about to do it and then the parents come back and the parents press charges against the guy and now the daughter's in trouble the neighbor who was the single dad and who is keeping an eye on the girl might go to jail and lose his kid and now the girl feels guilty about it and she doesn't know what to do now the reason why i want there to be a part two is because well the girl in the story irritates me so much i mean she goes on saying i want a baby i want a baby my friends had a baby so i want a baby i want to have a daughter blah 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 number one she's young around 17 and she hasn't made a life for herself yet and it's clear that she doesn't know how the real world works. She thinks life is all easy and being a mother is going to be easy too. Now it's crystal clear that this girl is irresponsible. And not only that, she gets the neighbour in trouble and he's going to lose his son and go to prison. I mean when the girl seduced him, he could have just backed off. But instead he gave in and was going to do the business. But hey, what can you do? A man's a man, right? And she was almost at the age of 18, so yeah, it's just one of those things. I really want to know what happens next in this. I want to know if the guy's going to be okay, what's going to happen to his son, what are the parents going to do, what's going to happen to this girl. For me, I just really want to know what's going to happen. And yeah, I know I find this girl insufferable, but there is a good story to this. I would like to know what happens in the end. I don't want that guy to go to jail because of this stupid girl. I mean, let's just say for example that the guy did go to jail. Who would look after the neighbor's kid? Well, maybe the parents could adopt him and they could put the daughter in charge of the kid. So that way she can see how hard it is to be a parent and she needs experience and money and a job and so on and so forth. Maybe then she'll learn a lesson. Actually, you know what? That's actually a really good idea for a story. The girl could adopt the neighbor's kid and she can see how hard it is to have a kid. That would be good for a part two. But yeah, this story definitely needs a part two. And so with that said, let's move on to number eight. Number eight. 
a strange man came to me and asked me to do an unbelievable thing. Okay, basically, a girl thinks that her mom is cheating on her father and her mom is meeting up with somebody else and the mom is sneaking behind her daughter's back and then the daughter finds out that her mother is meeting with another man. The girl goes to her mother, confronts her and demands to know who this guy is that she's with and the man says, so this is our daughter and then the mother pulls her back and the mother explains to her daughter who that man really is and apparently the guy was a sperm donor and the parents told him to never intrude in their life ever again. Yeah, apparently the father was a Jaffa, aka seedless. Anyways, the reason why that man, or her biological father, came to look for her is because the guy has a disease and he needs a marrow bone transplant and his daughter is his only living relative. But the parents refuse to help him because they didn't want their daughter to be put in danger for some reason. And then the daughter goes on saying, if it wasn't for that man, I wouldn't have existed. So don't I owe it to that man? Because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have existed. So the parents are refusing to help the man because they were for their daughter's safety and the daughter might be thinking of helping him. And you know what, if you ask me, I think that she should talk to her parents and see if they can come to an understanding. Because again, if it wasn't for him, she wouldn't have existed. I mean, I know this isn't the most exciting story in the bunch, but for me, I find it very interesting. Like, what would her relationship be with this man? What would her relationship be with her father? What would her relationship be with her mother now? Will the daughter help her biological father? Maybe this one could have been a little bit further down, but I am a sucker for these sort of stories. But you know, that's me. And with that said, let's move on to number seven. Number seven. My wedding was cursed. Our story begins with the couple wanting to get married and they're planning on getting married at the husband's sister's venue and the sister calls up her brother and her brother's wife saying that they double booked and they can't have the wedding on that day. And then they decide to go to another venue and the sister is mad at them because she was insulted because they decided to use another venue. And then later they find out their passport is missing and she can't find them. And then later on, her fiance accuses her for cheating on him with another man because he found her old phone and there was a guy texting her saying I got the passports and money I can't remember if there was money anyways the husband leaves and she is begging him to stay and telling him that she doesn't know anybody named Seth but he leaves anyways and then her fiance's sister comes by and says listen you didn't cheat on my brother did you and then she said no and they started talking all night and then the sister said something along the lines of maybe my brother got cold feet and he couldn't go through through the wedding he must have been the one who set it all up and the woman started to believe her fiance's sister and then she falls asleep and then later on in the middle of the night she wakes up and sees her fiance's sister on a laptop looking at pictures of her sister-in-law and then the woman who is getting married to her fiance she picks up her old phone and she texts a message to the guy seth and she hears a bleep coming from the same room as her sister-in-law and she catches her in the act and she finds out that she was the one who was named Seth. She was the one who was sending those messages about the passports. And the woman was furious at her sister-in-law and the sister-in-law explained why she did all this. And apparently the sister-in-law was in love with her sister-in-law and she couldn't bear that her brother was marrying the woman that she loved. So she planned to sabotage their wedding and tried to break up her brother and her sister-in-law up. And then the woman told her sister-in-law to get out and now the woman doesn't know what to do. And obviously she has to tell her fiance that his sister cooked everything up to make them break up because she was in love with her. But the thing is, he isn't picking up. And it's obvious that the sister-in-law is crazy because she is in love with her brother's fiance. So yeah, I really, really wanna know how this turns out. Like, how is she gonna get back together with her fiance? Will her sister-in-law stalk her and carry on trying to ruin their marriage? This was another one that infuriated me. I mean, if you was in love with somebody, but they're marrying somebody else or being with somebody else and they was happy, then if you loved them, you would put their happiness before yours. And it's crystal clear that the sister-in-law wasn't gonna go for that. If the sister-in-law really did love her brother's fiance, then her happiness should have been her happiness. But instead, she's just being selfish, trying to break up her brother and his fiance up. So I really, really wanna know what's gonna happen next. This episode deserves a part two. And so all I said, let's move on to number six. Number six. My twin sister wants to ruin my life, my love and my happiness. Basically in this story, there are these twin sisters and they have a very conservative family. Well, conservative parents, or you could just say that they're very religious. And the twin sisters get on very, very well. They are very, very close with each other. So yeah, one day, one of the twins and her friend accidentally goes into a gay bar and then a few minutes later they leave because they got the wrong place and then when they walked out and walked away from the building somebody who knew the two girls told her parents 
the twins' parents that they saw her come out of a gay bar, and her parent was not pleased. She tried to explain that she wasn't gay and they just got lost, but the parents didn't believe her and they sent her to a gay camp in hopes of fixing her. And then she goes to this camp and she meets a girl who was actually gay and then they became friends. And then later on, the twin girl and the other girl who she met at camp actually started liking each other. And she figures out that she is gay. What a twist, eh? She said she wasn't gay earlier on, but then later on, she figures out she is gay. And then after camp, she kept in contact with the girl she likes. And the twin girl was worried what her parents would think if her parents ever found out that she was gay. So the girl went to her twin sister in hopes that she would understand of what her predicament is. And when she told her twin sister that she was gay, her twin sister came out and said that she was also gay. And Janine, the one who went to camp, was thinking that everything would just work out with the help of her sister since they were both gay. However, the other twin, Alicia, decided against her sister Janine of being gay because she knew it would hurt both their parents if they found out that both of their kids were gay. Alicia, the other twin, was completely against her sister Janine of being gay and she said that she would do all she can to break up her sister and her girlfriend. She even went so far as to look up her sister's girlfriend and sent her a picture of her sister and her boy together. But Janine's girlfriend believed Janine and now there's a fight between Alicia and Janine. And Janine is thinking about telling her parents the truth about Alicia and her being gay. So that way there won't be any more secrets. And then she and her girlfriend can move far away and start a new life. But at the same time, she doesn't want to hurt her parents. I mean, come on, this deserves a part two. Two sisters who are close, two parents who are homophobic, and then the other sister finds out that the other one is gay, and she wants to break her sister up with this other girl, and now they're fighting. I mean, come on, who wouldn't want to see a part two to this story? Now, I will say this, Alicia is being very, very selfish, and Janine is right about her sister. Alicia expects her sister to be straight for the sake of their parents, while she can just be gay. And you know what, you have to admit, that is pretty damn selfish. Alicia is selfish. So yeah, this definitely needs a part two to it. What would the parents think? What are the twins relationship going to be after all this is over? I would love to know what happens next in a part two. And so with that said, let's move on to number five. Number five. Number five is going to be a tiebreaker. Me and my identical twin are both pregnant at 16 with the same guy. Basically in this video, as to what you can see from the title, there are two twins they are very close and they love their family. And then one day, one of the twins finds a boyfriend. And the boyfriend tells the twin that nobody can find out about their relationship, especially his parents, because they have a no dating rule for him. And so they go on dating and they pretend not to know each other at school and they spend the night with each other. And then later on, she finds out that her sister, the other twin, is also dating somebody in secret. And then later on, both the twins find out that they're pregnant and they both tell the parents and both the parents are furious and the father demands who the fathers are. And they both say their names. And apparently, the guys that they were dating were both the same guy. The twins was dating the same guy. What a scumbag. And then later, the parents of the twins go to the guy's parents. And as it turns out, the guy didn't have a no dating policy from his parents. He just lied so he could have both twins. But saying that, he did say that he loved the other twin. Not the twin that I was talking about earlier. If you guys have seen the video, you'll know what I'm talking about. Anyways, both the twins and the parents was having a discussion on what they should do. And the mother came forward and said, the boy that got them pregnant is no good and they should just kick him out of their lives, which one of the twins and the mother agreed on. And then the father said that the boy should marry one of the twins because it would help with financial stuff. And both the mother and one of the twins said, we don't need that guy. We can work hard and bring up our kids without him. And then the father turned to the other twin and asked her what she thinks. She went sad and nodded her head, agreeing with her father. And the other twin and the mother were shocked. And she goes on saying, how can she want to marry this guy after cheating on them and lied to them. And the twin who agreed with her mother was angry because she didn't want to live under the same house as the guy who got her pregnant and watch from afar while her sister and the guy who got her pregnant is playing house. She doesn't want to be under the same house as him, but at the same time doesn't want to leave. And you know what? I'm just going to have to say this. After watching this video, I'm going to have to agree with the mother on this one. The guy obviously cheated and lied to both twins and he has the balls to say, oh, I just love this twin and not the other one. And you know what? He's a liar. He's a big fat liar. If he did love the one twin, he wouldn't have lied and slept with the other twin. The guy that got both of these girls pregnant, he doesn't deserve to be a father. And you know what? I can feel both the pains from both twins. One isn't happy about the fact that her twin gets a husband and her twin doesn't go with their mother's plan to kick him out. So the one twin chooses the guy over her sister, even though he cheated on both of them. 
with each other and the other twin who agrees with the father is stupid she chooses a guy over her own sister for me this story got me fuming this is one of those stories that gets you so hyped up with being angry at one character and you hope that the other character succeeds and for them not to make a part two for the story is just driving me nuts this story deserves a part two i really want to know what's going to happen next is it going to be like years later is the guy going to be a good father or a bad father are the twins relationship strained I would like to know more what's going to happen in the story. And so, let's move on to the other tiebreaker. My boyfriend is my caregiver, now I know his hidden purpose. Basically in the story, a girl gets run over and her spine is broken and she cannot walk anymore. They hire her a assistant to help her and she meets a nice boy. At first, the girl who couldn't walk anymore and was stranded in a wheelchair, she didn't like the idea that a boy had to take care of her. But over time, she started to like the boy and then fall in love with him and they got on so well with each other. And while that was going on, the girl had to go to court in order to prosecute the guy who ran her over with her parents. Her father is actually a lawyer and on the day when she had to go to court, she called her caregiver, who is also her boyfriend now. She wanted him to come with her to court, but he said he couldn't because he was sick. And even though she wanted him there, she went to court without him. And then one thing led to another in the court and then the court went on a break. The girl who was in the wheelchair went for a short walk and then she bumps into her caregiver, aka her boyfriend, and she was happy to see him. But the boyfriend was sad and then a woman came behind the girl in the wheelchair and the woman said to the boy come into the court case your father needs you and then the girlfriend got confused and the boyfriend still had that sad look on her face and then the girl who was in the wheelchair asked who this woman was and then the woman looked at the girl's face and she said how do you know my son and then she walks off and then her caregiver said that the guy who ran her over and put her in the wheelchair is actually his father and then when he found out he told his father to come clean and admit what he did but the father refused to so out of guilt he got a job as a caregiver and he unknowingly was taking care of the girl that his father ran over and then when the jury summons came in and he saw her name on it he was in shock and this left the girl speechless and then one thing led to another and even though it hurted her to do it because it would hurt her caregiver she went up and told the truth and now the caregiver's father is waiting for his sentence but even though this is happening she still loves her caregiver and assumingly that her caregiver also loves her and even though it's complicated and they still love each other parents of both kids refuse to accept the fact that both kids love each other and she goes on to say if it wasn't for the accident i would have met my caregiver okay first of all both the driver and the girl who is now in the wheelchair is both at fault she was looking at her phone while going at top speed on her bike and the driver was going at top speed going around a corner so they're both at fault for this but I guess the girl at the raw end of the deal. And also, she doesn't seem like a bad person. And even though I do admit that both are at fault, the father seems to be the one who doesn't want to accept responsibility for what he did. So it's either one of two things. One, he didn't see himself being in the wrong. Or two, he's just a coward. This story is kind of like a Romeo and Juliet sort of thing. Both families don't want their kids to be with the other. One family sees the son of the man who put their daughter in a wheelchair. And the other family sees the girl who put one of their own a father and a husband in jail and even though this is happening the boyfriend seems sad about it, but at the same time seems to still love his girlfriend so yeah i am definitely getting that romeo and juliet vibe here and that is why i want a part two i want to know what's going to happen between these two now i just love these sort of stories i love complicated situations if it wasn't for the accident they wouldn't have met and even though both parents hate the other family the kids still love each other so i would really like to know how they're going to sort this out this is a story that i desperately want to have a part two to and so this is my tiebreaker let's move on to number four number four i fell in love with my half sister <clears throat> sweet home alabama yeah 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 okay i got that joke out of the way let's move on the next story is about a kid who loses both of his parents one parent, which was the mom, lost her life in a car accident, and the dad lost his life to a disease. And the dad, before he died, signed up for a safety deposit box service. And when his son turned 18, he could open it. And all the contents in that box would go to him. And after hearing this, there was people left and right saying that they were his relatives, and they want to take care of him. But obviously, they were more interested in the security box more than him. And then, his dad's brother came up to him and said that they were really close when they were younger, and they lost contact when he moved to another city and his uncle offered him a place at his place with his family and the uncle genuinely seems to be happy to have him in his life the uncle even said before his brother died he asked him to take care of his son and he goes with his uncle to his house and meets his daughter and his wife and his daughter was really nice to him but his uncle's wife didn't want him there and the only reason that she allowed him to stay at their house was because of the deposit box and she kept telling him this if it wasn't for the deposit box 
I wouldn't have allowed you to be adopted. I swear, what a cow. I'm sorry, but this woman really irritates the hell out of me. Anyways, after getting so much grief from his uncle's wife, or his aunt, he was thinking of running away. But his cousin, which is a girl, kept encouraging him to stay. And his cousin made him feel right at home, they got along with each other, and they were really happy with each other. And even his cousin was blushing when they saw each other. And so he decided to wait until he was 18 and confess his love to his cousin. Um, sweet home Alabama. Ugh, that joke is getting so old. Anyways, the years were bittersweet. He loved spending time with his cousin, but he never go along with his uncle's wife or aunt. And then when he turned 18, he, his uncle, cousin and aunt went to go open the box at the bank. And when they opened it, the aunt shoved him out the way and started reading the letter that was in the box. The kid couldn't care less about the money, but he was expecting something along the lines of like thousands or millions of dollars in there. And then after reading the letter, the aunt was in shock as she dropped the letter. And then the kid picked up the letter and started reading it. And as it turned out, his mom, his dad and his uncle fell in love with the same woman, but his mom chose his uncle to be with. But his father loved the woman so much that he decided to wait for her. And then his mom broke up with her uncle and decided to go back to his father. And his father proposed to his mother well, not the father proposing to his mother, I'm just saying, you guys know what I'm trying to say. If you've watched the uh, video, you know what's happening. Anyways, his father proposed to his mother, again, you know what I'm trying to say, and she quickly fell pregnant. But the father knew the baby had to be his brother's, so he kept it quiet and pretended that he thought it was his, because he was infertile, because when he was younger, he had the mumps or something. And the reason why he didn't want to tell his wife that he knew that the baby wasn't his was because he was afraid of losing her. Again, the uncle got married to somebody else, which we all know is the evil aunt. So basically, his uncle is actually his father and his cousin is actually his half-sister. And his uncle didn't know anything about this until now. And the aunt was furious about this. She called her nephew a freak that ruined their family's happiness. And it looks like she was about to punch him. But his uncle, AKA father, pulled his wife back and dragged her outside the bank. And his cousin or half-sister was just standing there crying after hearing all this. So he finds out that his uncle is his father and his cousin is actually his half-sister. So yeah, as the title promised, he was in love with his half-sister. Oh, sweet home Alabama. And now he doesn't know what to do and how to feel. I swear to you guys, I love drama like this. Uncle, I am your son. I mean, after all these years of living with his uncle, he didn't know that his uncle was actually his father. I mean, you have to admit, the kid did dodge a bullet there. Because if he didn't read the contents of that safety deposit box, he would have just married his sister. Good thing he decided to uh, read it. And it's crystal clear that his aunt or stepmom hates him. The only reason that she allowed him in her house was because she thought there was money in that box. And from what we've gathered, there doesn't seem to be any money in that box, just a letter. And I don't think there was anything else in that box besides from that letter. So after all those years of telling the boy, if it wasn't for that deposit box, I wouldn't have never let you into this house. The aunt or stepmom thought she was gonna get money. So not only was there any money in the safe, but it turns out that her nephew is actually her husband's son. So instead of being understanding, this woman is just selfish and greedy. And after finding out that his cousin is actually his sister, even though I find it disgusting that two cousins can marry each other in some places in the world, I mean, come on, seriously, what was this kid thinking? Wanting to marry his own cousin? But whatever, it's just a story. So what's this kid gonna do now? Is he gonna leave home and find a job and find a place for himself? What's his relationship gonna be with his uncle now father? What's his relationship gonna be with his half-sister. What's this kid gonna do now? And you know what? I can tell that the aunt really, really doesn't want the kid in her house. Is this gonna lead to arguments with his uncle now father? And also, one other thing. The aunt has the nerve to say, oh, you ruined my family's happiness, is something that really, really pisses me off because the only person that was unhappy in that family was her. The uncle was happy to have him live with them and the daughter was happy for him to live with them. And the only one in that house who was unhappy with him being there was his aunt. She's just a greedy, selfish old bat who doesn't care what this kid has gone through. And the only reason that she kept him around was because she thought she was gonna get money from the deposit box. I would really like to know what's gonna happen next. Even if it's gonna be a three minute video, I would like to see a part two to this story. I really wanna know what's gonna happen to this kid and his relationship with his father and his half sister. What is he gonna do next? So yeah, that's number four. Let's move on to number three. Number three. My boyfriend replaced me, now I have nowhere to go. This story annoyed me so much. Not the fact that it was bad, but okay, let me start from the beginning. 
there was this girl and she hits it off with a guy and the guy tells the girl that his parents died or something like that and he lives with his uncle's family and he goes on to tell her that when he turns 18 he wants to be independent and move away somewhere and they're smitting with each other and he's saying I love you and and being all mushy mushy and then one day the girl introduces her boyfriend to her parents and the boyfriend and the parents started to get along very well and they started talking to him and he started talking to them and he even told them about his tragic past how his parents died or something like that and how he lives with his uncle and the parents said you can come over anytime and after that he started doing that and the kid started spending more time with the parents like for example they would make their daughter go to bed early so they could watch a horror movie with the boyfriend and then another day all three of them the mom the dad and the boyfriend went to the zoo and left the girlfriend behind and just left her a note saying that they were going to the zoo and when they came back the mom the dad and the boyfriend was talking how good their day was and the girlfriend was angry at the boyfriend and he brought out a necklace and he gave it to her and he was being all lovey-dovey saying i love you blah 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 that sort of stuff and then she started being smitten with him again and just forgot about the things that nagged her about him spending more time with her parents and then when she woke up one morning she saw her boyfriend helping her mother make pancakes and the boyfriend said dad would you like some more pancakes or something like that and the dad says no thanks son and the dad just glanced at his daughter and just said good morning and the mom gave her a half glanced smile and the mom gave him the biggest amount of pancakes ever while she only got little burn parts of pancakes I'm gonna tell you guys something now at this point I was really really fuming even before the video stopped anyways I'll continue describing what's happening and then when he finished his pancakes the mom said to the boyfriend, would you like any more? And the boyfriend said, no thanks mom, I'm stuffed. And the parents kept on spending more time with the boyfriend, going to restaurants, cinemas, etc, etc, without even inviting the daughter or telling her where they're going. And even though the girlfriend is practicing with her band for an event at the school, and the girlfriend goes on saying that, oh, they spend all their time with her boyfriend and never ever spends any time with their own daughter and every time she walks into the room they just go silent i swear these parents are freaking awful and the boyfriend is terrible as well anyways the girl goes home because she had an headache and she finds out that her boyfriend is packing suitcases in the car and her boyfriend tells the parents to go on a wedding anniversary trip and he also told them that their daughter would be performing on that day and they did all this without telling her a word about it and now she can see that her boyfriend is actually a manipulative rat she believes that her boyfriend is trying to steal her parents away from her and then she goes up to him and says that they are over and she wants him out of her and her parents life and the parents didn't even take her side and they didn't even ask why or they didn't even have a talk about it or anything like that they just told her that they were ashamed to have her as a daughter because of the way she was acting and they also said if she's still the way she is by the time they get back from their vacation or holiday with that selfish grudge then she had better have left the house guys i don't know about you but i am seething with anger right now and even though i'm explaining this just remembering what the parents are doing it just makes me really really angry so yeah carrying on it's been a month since then and she's been living with her friend and her friend believes her that her ex is a lying rat the boyfriend has manipulated them and the parents are still not talking to their daughter and the boyfriend is still living in her house and the girl's aunt said that the parents have redecorated her old room and made it his own and the parents have introduced the boyfriend to the rest of the family the cousins aunts uncles etc etc this girl believed that the boy loved her but it was all a lie and warmed himself into her life so that he could seal it you know what i don't know about you guys but this story made me really really angry now i know this is a story but you know what i'm just gonna say this the parents are absolutely disgusting in this story they just replaced their actual daughter with a complete stranger they spend more time with him going out to restaurants and the cinema etc etc having a good time with him chatting etc etc they give him most of the food while she's left for scraps and they don't tell her anything about their future plans and they even kick her out so they can keep the boyfriend or the ex-boyfriend and they have the nerve to redecorate her old room to make it his own and for a month they haven't even spoke to their daughter i mean the parents are just so goddamn awful here and you know what if there is going to be a part two i pray i really really do pray that the parents get punished because even though the boyfriend stole her life the parents did a 180 on their own daughter this video really really made me angry i want her to get revenge not only on the ex-boyfriend but on her parents as well first i want her to expose her ex as the rat he is you know getting evidence from maybe 
her ex's uncle you know maybe try and get some evidence from him and try and dig some dirt on him and she also gets other people and evidence to prove that her parents were being neglectful towards her while welcoming her ex into her house she should get all this evidence and at the event she invites both her parents and her ex tricking them to come and see the event and right there and then she shames them in front of everybody shows them the evidence of what her ex has done and also shames up her parents because hey i'm more angry at the parents than i am with the ex i mean yeah the ex is a scumbag but the way the parents treated their daughter disgusted me so they too at least deserve some punishment too as you guys can see i'm very very passionate about this and i really 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 want to see a part two and see how this girl deals with the situation this story definitely deserves a part two and with that said let's move on to number two number two is my mom loves my uncle and put my dad in jail seriously why didn't they make a number two for this story i have been waiting ages and ages and ages for this story okay basically in this story it's about a girl who lives with her mom and her dad her dad is a congressman and he always tries his best for his family always mentioning his family in his speeches and her mom does charity events and is very well liked in the community and it seemed that the family really did love each other until one day the daughter went home early and she finds out that her mother is having an affair with her father's brother the uncle left and the mom was hesitantly telling her daughter how her husband was struggling with the election and he put all of the money into it and then the daughter says mom i didn't ask and then the mom says oh this is just an adult thing and she asked her daughter to keep it quiet the daughter knows exactly what's going on and the daughter even said that she would keep it quiet so from that day on she kept the fact that her mom was having an affair with her uncle and then after that everything just seemed to go back to normal but her father was working really really hard and then later on somebody accused the father of embezzling money so dealing with the election and everyone giving him dirty looks and the law uh, etc etc it was really wearing him out but the father would always come home with a smile and a bouquet of flowers for his wife and it seems like everything was just going to get back to normal and then one day the daughter comes home and sees that there are police cars at the front of her house she goes in and sees the police ransacking the house and the police are asking the father some questions like how did these papers get here and well, what are these and etc etc and the father says i don't know i've never seen these papers before i've never seen these before and across the room pretending to be nervous and don't know what's going on is the girl's mother and her uncle and the mom says to her daughter the police thinks that her father is a financial criminal and she goes on saying that people are just doing their jobs and her uncle will take care of them now the daughter completely helpless that she couldn't do anything for her father that was struggling with all of this and on top of that her mother asked her father for a divorce and the father did it because he loved his wife unconditionally and he didn't want his problems to affect her and now her father's on probation and now the girl's uncle is now living with her and her mother and after that the girl left her house and she went and lived with her aunt and during her time living there her cousin was giving her such an hard time and it got to a point where her cousin was giving her so much grief that she got her phone and put it in some water and she got in trouble for it and she almost got kicked out and then afterwards she just grit her teeth and just dealt with it and then one day the girl's father's lawyer came to her and said that they found evidence that it was her uncle alan who framed her father and her mother was helping her uncle do it and even though the father found out about the affair he didn't have it in him to fight anymore and get this the dad said that he would accept everything so that his wife can do whatever she wants oh man oh man this guy is simping so bad and even after all that the father said he just wanted to let his daughter know that he was innocent and he wants her to carry on loving her mother okay really really <sighs> well anyways the girl wants to help the police so they can put her uncle into prison and save her dad but on the other hand, she said that she doesn't want to go against her father's wishes. Really? This is one of the videos that really ticked me off. Anyways, the girl believes that her mother was being controlled by her uncle. And she goes on saying that her mother's got a good heart. Okay, if her mother was a good person as she said she is, then she wouldn't have done what she did to her husband. This story pissed me off so much. The fact that the mother cheated on her husband with his brother and helped him framed her husband and then she asked him to divorce her and she pretends that uh, she didn't know what her husband was doing and all that stuff. And the girl wants to respect her father's wishes. Well, you know what? You know what I've got to say? I say forget about your father's wishes and just put your uncle behind bars where he belongs. Or, here's an idea. Here's a loophole. Find all the evidence against your uncle and try and take your mother out of the picture as much as you can and say that your mother was being manipulated by your uncle. 
or find all the evidence that leads to your uncle and with the least evidence that would lead to your mother. Yeah, yeah, I know this is just a story, but this story really ticked me off. And this is just an idea that she could do. Find the evidence that would lead to your uncle more than it would do to your mother. And when her uncle has been put in prison and her father is cleared of all charges, leave your mother and go and live with your father. And tell your mother, the only reason I didn't tell the police about you was because I was respecting my father's wishes. My dad loved you and in his letters he also told me to carry on loving you. We had a wonderful family and you helped ruin it. You've lost dad and now you've lost me. I'm gonna go and live with dad. Goodbye mom. And if you ask me, I think that would be the perfect punishment for the mother. The uncle goes to jail and the girl respects her father's wishes. That in my opinion would be the perfect ending. But after saying this, and if Short Stories is listening to this, they probably won't do this. Because they'll want to put in their own ideas, not the ideas from other people. But yeah, this story deserves, it needs, needs, needs to have a part two. I mean, I gave my ideas of what that girl could do, but saying that, I really, really want to see how this turns out. And with that said, let's move on to number one. And number one is... I accidentally did a terrible thing with my student, but now he says he loves my daughter. Okay, now this is a good one. The story starts off. The story starts off with a woman, and she's 35 years old, and she tells the story how she got pregnant at the age of 19. And apparently she has this bad taste in men, because when she told the guy that she slept with that she's pregnant, he told her that he wasn't interested in her, and he also told her that he was a married man. Wow, what a scumbag. So he up and left. And even though she was the only one that's taking care of her daughter, and even admitting that it was odd, she managed to look after her daughter while carrying on with her education in college. She finished it, and now she has her dream job. And this is years later, where her daughter is in, I think, is in high school, college, I think, and the mother is an English teacher. And then one day, the mother told her daughter that she's transferring to another school to teach. But the daughter didn't like the idea of moving, but eventually she came around. The job paid well and it was closer to her parents. So before the big move, she got her friends together and decided to go on vacation. I'm talking about the mother here, not the uh, daughter. The daughter decided not to go with them and decided to stay behind and say goodbye to her old friends. And on the holiday, the mum and her friends was having a good time and she felt young again. And you know, she was just having an all about good time. And then she got drunk and wandered into the casino. casino. And then she meets up with this guy called Todd and she ended up having a one night stand with him. And then when the vacation was over, she moved and went to a new job out of school. And, get this, the guy that she slept with, Todd, was in her class. And she's like, what, 35 and he's 16? So is the guy a grave robber or is she a cradle robber? When they met in the casino, he told her that he was 21. And even though their eyes met, he didn't look twice and went to his seat. And even though the woman felt awkward, she just assumed that he didn't remember her. And so she carried on like nothing happened. And at the same time, the woman's daughter was also at the same school and she wasn't in any of her classes and she told her mom not to speak to her in school because having a mom as a teacher is super embarrassing a few months later the woman sees her daughter and todd the guy she slept with talking in the hallway and she could tell that her daughter liked him and the woman didn't like this and she knew that he was trouble because he lied about his age and she didn't approve her daughter of being with him and then after that she became a much more stricter mom telling her daughter to come back at seven and that she can't date any boys but that didn't stop the daughter because she was so rebellious and she snuck out while her mom wasn't looking but eventually the daughter got caught trying to sneak back into their house at 1 p.m and the mother shouted at her daughter saying that she was grounded for a month and then the daughter started shouting at her mother saying that she was old-fashioned so grounding your kids is old-fashioned no it's not punishing your kids is a way for them to learn the mistakes the mom is just looking out for her daughter Anyways, and the daughter also said that she was in love with Todd and she couldn't do anything to stop her. The mom freaked out and she said that Todd was a troublemaker. And the daughter said, why do you have a problem with Todd? And the mom said, because he's not good enough for you. But the daughter really wanted to know the reason why she didn't like Todd. But the mother couldn't tell her what transpired between her and Todd. And then later on, Todd found out that she was standing between him and her daughter. So he asked his teacher to meet her in private and he told her that he remembers her from that night and he also showed her pictures of the night that they slept together and Todd blackmailed her and told her to stop coming between him and her daughter and if she didn't she would take these pictures to the papers. So basically the kid is blackmailing her. Seriously what sort of scumbag would do that? So he was a lawyer and he was a blackmailer. So yeah I'm taking the mom's side that he's no good for, for her daughter but saying that, she had no choice but to let them carry on with their relationship because she was at a dead end. She would end up losing her job and her daughter. And after a while, the daughter and Todd was getting along and Todd was treating her so nicely, taking her to places, buying her gifts. And the mother started to think that maybe her daughter brought out the good in him, but it was still weird for, for her because she slept with him. After a while, 
Todd said he would delete the photos because he didn't want her daughter to accidentally see the pictures. And he deleted the photos right in front of her and said that he truly loved Bella, her daughter. And the mom was happy about it and, and she thought that everything would get back to normal. And then sometime later, there was a parents' evening and at the parents' evening, she bumps into the guy who was Bella's father, the teacher's daughter, Brett, pulled her to the side and he wanted to talk to her and then she started shouting at him saying you used me you abandoned me and our child and you're a lawyer and then 16 years later you dare and try and talk to me and while the teacher and brett was arguing they both turned around and saw todd was behind them and he overheard everything with a teary look he said dad is this true and then the female teacher put two and two together if todd is brad's son then that means Bella and Todd are half siblings. And as the truth came out, she was trying to hold back her tears and Todd looked like he was about to throw up and he ran away. And then Brett gave her a dirty look and ran after his son. And now the female teacher doesn't know what to do. She knows that if all this comes out, it'll break her daughter's heart. Oh man, what a story. This story feels like one of those very, very cheesy soap dramas. The woman gets pregnant. She tells the guy that she's pregnant with his child and it turns out that he's married and he doesn't want anything to do with her or the baby. He runs away. Years later, she meets up with a boy, which at this point we know is his son. The teacher sleeps with him and then he blackmails the teacher and then deletes the files later. And then she meets up with Bella's father and then the female teacher has a argument with him and then the son finds out about everything. God damn man, this is so freaking cheesy, but at the same time, I love it. The daughter doesn't know anything about this. And also, Todd finds out that his dad cheated on his mom with the same woman that he slept with. And, to make matters worse, Todd finds out that he's dating his own half-sister. I'm gonna say this, Brad is the scumbag of the story. The mother is just trying to do what's right for her daughter. And Todd at the beginning seemed like a scumbag, but later on it seems that he turned out to be a nice guy. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna say that Brett is definitely the asshole of this story. So there's gonna be loads of things that's gonna transpire in the story. Brett's been caught out to be a cheat. Todd finds out that his father cheated and that, that Bella is his sister and the female teacher has slept with Todd. I mean, seriously, what a freaking coincidence, eh? And to be fair, even though I love the drama in this, I don't think there would be much more of a story to this. But I think it would be much more of a conclusion to like what happened after that. Because if you guys really think about it, everything just can't go back to normal. I think the story should be about how everybody reacted to it. Like Brett's wife reacting to the fact that he cheated. The daughter's reaction to the fact that she was dating her half-brother and her mom slept with Todd. It would be more or less a reaction to everybody's reaction to um, the situation and how things go from there. And also, the last time I checked, sleeping with somebody who's under the age of 18 is going to put you in prison. Well, it depends where you live anyways. So... This is going to leave a big, huge, giant mess, and it's going to leave everybody sad. And I'm pretty sure the father, Brett, is going to get revenge on the teacher because if Brett's wife catches wind of this, she'll most likely divorce him. And if that happens, Brett will surely try and ruin the female teacher's life. I really, really, really want to know what's going to happen next. It's clear that Brett's the bad guy, and I really, really hope that he gets his comeuppance. But what about the mother and her daughter? What's their relationship going to be now? This is a story that I truly, 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 truly hope get to part two it just needs to happen and so you guys are probably thinking that this is the end of the video right that since i've finished at number one this video is going to stop right well actually no this is how i do my top 10 i usually go from 10 to 1 with a tiebreaker with some honorable mentions before i do the last video and i know what some of you're going to say you're going to say oh but geek freak you passed the number one slot to do some honorable mentions well here's the thing even though i do have tiebreakers at number five and sometimes on lists everything would end at number one on most lists but not on my lists. When I do my lists, I do it from 10 to 0. And the slot at number 0 is a very, very important slot. Whenever I place something on a list and I place something on 0, that one thing at 0 will stay there no matter what. It's like, for example, my video on Goku vs Superman Death Battle. I tell people the reason why I put the two things on the list at number 0, or my top list of anime that I love so much, and I put my favorite series on 0. Basically, whenever I put something on 0, it will stay there no matter what. Even if I was to remake a list, that one thing at zero will always stay there no matter what, even if I was to update a list. But in this case, let's just say for example, the one story that I put on zero add a part two to it, then the part one of that story won't be on this list anymore because the part two was made for it. You guys get what I'm saying now? It's like for example, spoilers by the way, my top 10 favorite anime series at zero is gonna be Monster. And even if I was to remake a list, the series Monster will always be at number zero and I don't ever take it off the list. It will always remain at zero. So yeah, I just wanted to clear that up. So yeah, there's one more segment before the end of this video, which is gonna be zero. But before I do that, I am gonna tell you guys 
my honourable mentions. And these honourable mentions are stories from short stories that I wish I could put on this list, but I didn't have the room space. So yeah, you guys know what a honourable mention is. And so, let's continue. My first honourable mention. I flirted with my art teacher and accidentally uncovered a crazy secret about my life. Honourable mention number two. An abnormal relationship between my boyfriend and his sister. Honourable mention number three. I secretly wrote my BFF boyfriend love letters. Honourable mention number four. Then the truth came out. My sister suddenly spoke after 12 years of being mute. My family's shocking secrets were revealed. Honourable mention number five. My sister can freely date our uncle after finding out my family secret. And honourable mention number six. My mom put me on sale when I was 16. If you guys want to go and check out these stories, you guys can go and do that. They're all on the short stories channel. And you guys will see why I wanted to put these stories on this list, but I didn't have the room for them. And before I continue, I just want to say, if there's any stories on short stories channel that you believe that should be on this list, then please recommend them to me and say why they deserve to have a part two. And so with that said, Let's move on to zero. <sighs> okay, guys. When it came to this story, I was so goddamn angry. I mean, really, really p pissed at this story. Now, here's the thing. The story is good, don't get me wrong, but the story really, really, really made me angry. Again, it's not because it was bad, but it's because what happened to the main character in the story. This story desperately really 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 needs to have a part two i really want to know what happens in this story now usually i would give a description of what's happening in the story but in this case i'm not going to do that because the story left me with seething anger and not having a part two just really ticked me off because this story has been out for like months and i'm still waiting to see what happens next i'm just going to give a short summary it's about two twins and one of them is successful and the other one isn't they're both teenagers and the one twin is saving up and has her life together and they were both babysitting this rich couple and they both live with their aunt and the good twin is very kind and honest and then one day the good twin gets arrested and gets sentenced to three years in prison for stealing and when she comes out her aunt doesn't want anything to do with her her boyfriend was stolen by her sister and her sister has stolen her money so she could go to the same college as what she wants and get this the evil twin framed her own sister she framed her and stole her life and she got blamed for a crime that she didn't commit and when she got out and confronted her sister the sister gasped and she ran away and she tried to look her up on facebook and she said to her why the good twin found out that her sister framed her for a crime she didn't commit so she could take her life and now the good twin is saying what should i do i don't want you to go to prison because being in prison is terrible this story needs a part two it desperately 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 needs to have a part two. I want the evil twin to get her comeuppance. The evil twin deserves to be put in prison and longer for stealing and framing her own sister. And also, what is the evil twin gonna do after she found out that her sister is out of prison now? Because after when the good twin finds out that her sister framed her and the evil twin finds out that her sister is out of prison, the evil twin is gonna probably do something about her sister. Maybe she might kill her. Maybe she might frame her again. Or maybe she might try and turn people against her. But you know what? I really, really, really wanna see the evil twin get what's coming to her. I want to see the good twin have her name cleared and the evil twin gets twice the sentence. And the title of this video is My Sister Kicked Me Out of My Life. Short stories, if you guys are listening to this, I beg you, I implored you, I really, 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 really want to see a part two to the story. Please tell me and everybody who's frustrated at the story, tell us what happens next in a part two, please. This is the one story that I truly, truly want to see have a part two to. I genuinely want to see the evil twin get what's coming to her. She deserves to be put in prison. This story has to be the most frustrating story I have ever seen on this channel. Not because it was bad, but because I really, 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 really wanted to know what happened next. It's just one of those stories that needs a part two and maybe a part three. Depends on the length of the, of the story, really. And that's it for me, guys. And yes, I do apologize for this video for being as long as it is, but I did have a good time making this video. And you know what? That's all that counts, is just having yourself a good time when you're making a video. And these stories, actually, you know what? Not just these stories on this list, and not even the honorable mentions, but most of the videos on short stories deserves to have a part two and an ending and i know some of you are probably angry because there are stories on short stories that deserve to be on this list but i do apologize because i can't remember all of them and these stories are the ones i remember the most so who knows maybe i might make a part two in the future who knows but in all seriousness i really do hope that zero gets a part two and number one basically all the videos on this list but you know it's just wishful thinking i love short stories and I think their stories are fantastic. And who knows, I might actually make another list of my top 10 favourite horror animations on YouTube. That's a maybe, by the way. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Geek Freak. Peace out. 
Thank you guys for watching. And if there's a series you want me to check out and review and give my thoughts on it, or if there's a top 10 list you want me to do, or any reactions, or responses, or rants on anything geeky, just leave links and comments in the comment sections below, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. If you guys want to go and check out my other social medias, I'm on Gab, Discord, BitChute, Dailymotion, Reddit, Subscribestar, Minds, Instagram, Twitch, DeviantArt, Pinterest, Parlor, my anime list, and Vidya. And don't forget to check out my skeptic channel, Gypsy Freak. And my other social medias are down there in the description box below, so if you want to go and check them out, please do. And if you guys want to support this channel, I'm on PayPal, Patreon, and GoFundMe. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you won't miss another video. I'm Geek Freak. Peace out.